Bet, the nation's leading spray deodorant, and Finesse, the flowing cream shampoo, bring you everybody's favorite guessing game, What's My Line? And now, let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in the New York Journal American and papers coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. And on my left, the brilliant young humorist who is the subject of an extremely laudatory article in the current issue of Time magazine, Mr. Steve Allen. Thank you very much. And on my left, the lovely lady who's starring in the new Broadway hit play, Late Love, Miss Arlene Francis. And on my left, a gentleman who is not only a renowned publisher and writer, but one of the warmest, most ingratiating fellows in town, Mr. Bennett Sir. It can only matter. <laughs> we all know we're, we're having a smaze in New York now. And on my left is a very amazing gentleman. <laughs> uh, he's the panel moderator of this show, and his family and he are all described in the man with the velvet whip in this week's TV guide. <laughs> so here's the man with the whip, John Daly. Thank you, and uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to What's My Line. Once again tonight, uh, we're going to introduce some people to the panel. And the people who are introduced to the panel are going to have some very interesting occupations, and we trust that the panel will have a lot of trouble deciding exactly what those occupations may be. Uh, we want our guests to have a good time. We also want them to go home with some prizes. We'll also have a famous guest challenger before the panel a bit later, but right now it's time to let the experts meet our first challenger whose job has to be spotted. So would you sign in, please, ma'am? Hattie? That's all right, just to start another line. That's fine. You want to go on with that, you go ahead. S-H-O... L-E-S. Hattie Scholl, is that right? <laughs> First time you've ever been on television? It is. It is that? Yeah. I must say it's a lovely orchid, but it only looks that good because you're with it. Mm -hmm. I suppose you tell us where you're from. Rockland, Maine. Rockland, Maine. Yeah. Well, how nice of you to come down and see us. There are four people over there who are very nice people, even though I sit over here and give them a lot of trouble. They're the members of the panel, and they want to know you a bit better before we ask some questions. So would you go over and say hello to them, please? Shake hands, Mr. Jones. Hello, Mr. Jones. How are you? Nice to meet you. <laughs> All right, Mrs. Scholes, will you come over here now and sit with next to me? Uh, I don't know whether you are familiar enough with uh, what's my line to know what happens next. Let's bring the chair in real close. That's it. You comfortable? Good. Now, on the basis of this very brief chance that you two, or you four and you one, have had to know each other, we give them one free guess as to what your line may be. We always begin the free guesses with Miss Kilgallen. I think she makes patchwork quilts. Makes patchwork quilts. Mr. Allen. I think she's a history teacher. Miss Francis. I think she's an artist model for those famous Maine paintings. <laughs> Mr. Seth. I think Mrs. Shoal sets out lobster pots. <laughs> no, I'm afraid nobody has it. So we'll let our viewers have a further look at Mrs. Hattie Shoals of Rockland, Maine, and at the same time, we'll tell them what her line is. <laughs> now, Mrs. Shoals, time that you can give them a no answer to a question. We flip one of these cards, and when we flip ten of these cards, you have won the game. Now, let's see how far you can go. We give them one last bit of help. Mrs. Shoals is salaried. With that, let's begin the general questioning with... Uh, Arlene Francis. Mrs. Scholes, do you work with your hands at all? Yes. Uh, do you, uh, uh... Yes. Yes? Uh, is this product, uh, sold directly to, uh, people in stores and so forth? Would yes. people buy it in stores, yes. this work? Uh, is it fine work? Yes. Uh, well, I think perhaps we don't want to mislead them. I'll have a small conference. You all go ahead and have fun. <laughs> Every pretty girl, John. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, no. We've had a committee meeting. That'll be one down and nine to go. <laughs> this is not fine work in the context of the question as we understand it, uh, in that we pr 
proposed that what you propounded was that there was fine needlework or something like that involved. Delicate work, yes, quite. Yes, that's fine. That's All one right. down to nine to go, Mr. Mrs. Sir. Mrs. Shells, does the product that you deal with, has it ever been alive? Yes. Is it, is it alive when it first comes into your little lily white hands? <laughs> no. It That's two down and eight to go. I, now I'm learning something, too. Two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, is this product something that might be found in the home? Yes. Uh, would it be uh, used by both men and women? Yes. And could children use it, too? Could children, children? use it, too? Yes. yes. Uh, would it ever be found in the kitchen? Yes, I think so. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Would it ever be found in the dining room? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Would it yeah. ever be found on the dining room table? On it or under it? On it. <laughs> on the table? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, is it uh, any type of food when it reaches the table? Yes. <laughs> so it's food that has been alive, but it isn't by the time it reaches the table. It isn't even by the time it... <laughs> uh, do you do something to it uh, after it has been caught or killed or shot or whatever the term would be that makes it more attractive to eat? Yes. I think we could say it makes it more attractive. <laughs> well, let's get down to what kind of a food is it. Is it by any chance a, a fish product? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, is it a shellfish rather than a, just a flabby little old scale fish? A shellfish rather than a flabby little scale fish? Uh, uh, three down. <laughs> Cut them go. <laughs> Mr. Allen. Then it is a little more like a flabby little old scale fish. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A little more. And uh, what do you do? Take the flab off it or...? <laughs> <laughs> you process fish in some way? Yes. All right, next contestant. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. Do you uh, add any other ingredients to it? Yes. You make some kind of a fish dish. <laughs> Is that uh, a formal question? Is that in the form of an answer? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do you, do you uh, make like a, a fish cake or something of that sort? No, don't make a fish cake. That makes it four down and uh, six to go and Miss Francis. But you do treat this fish in some way. Yes. Well, you don't look like the sort of the woman that would smoke, but do you smoke fish by any chance? Please. <laughs> <laughs> you don't smoke fish, do you? No. Sit here. You go on. You have a new fish. Mrs. Shell's uh, a lovely lady like you wouldn't have anything to do with so horrible a product as cod liver oil, would you? That makes it six down and four to go. <laughs> Sunday, we don't talk about things. Miss Kilgallen. Uh, would it be possible for this fish to arrive at the table in the form of a first course? No. Mm, uh, wait a minute, we've got to have a small conference, actually. I think, um, yes, in, in some a simple dinner, esoteric you understand. circles, this is done. In esoteric circles, it's done. Well, let us say that it would not be a normal procedure, I believe, in the average home, although that if you were to go out for a big evening, you might get some of this in a first course. I see. May we rule out soup? Because I know New England is famous for its fish chowder. Would you like to rule out soup? Yes. Is it something other than fish chowder? In other words, you want to rule out soup? Yes. All right, you go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> is this fish uh, smaller than a salmon? Well, salmon or all kinds yeah. of... Yes, yeah, smaller than yeah. salmon. But is it bigger than a little tiny goldfish? Is it bigger than a little tiny goldfish? <laughs> you hear us? Mrs. Schultz is going to be able to see these stars. You don't work with them. No. Well, is what she does anything like pickling? Anything like pickling? Mm-hmm. I, w I would say that if um, you used the word pickling specifically there, we'd have to say seven down and three to go, because this is not a pickling operation. <laughs> well, I'm not much of a cook. I really don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> all right, Steve, I'm going to give you one minute more on this. I wonder if she's something like a sardine facer. She sees that all the uh, sardines face the same way in the can or something of that sort. I think that's pretty close, Steve. Actually, what is the uh, general verb we're looking for? Sardine packer? Packer. That's right. <laughs> Mr. 
Britain shows Frank Jardine. And Mrs. Scholes, you did beautifully. You gave them a really rough time, and we're very pleased. We hope you enjoyed your visit. It's nice to think you wanted to come all the way down to see us. All right, panel, let's see what you can do with another challenger. Would you sign in, please, sir? Everett? Massachusetts. Oh, Everett Mida. Is that right? That's right. All right. Uh, <laughs> panel can get a look at you in profile. Then we'll send you over there and you can get a good look at them. Would you tell us, first of all, where you come from? Brooklyn, New York. Brooklyn, New York. Yeah. Right. Brought your family. Did you? Part. Part of it. Just part of it. The rest well, is watching in. Since you've got your family out there, you have nothing to worry about. Go on over and see them anyway, huh? You take hands with some leaders? Yes, sir. Very firm hands. Yes, indeed. Honey. <laughs> All right, Mr. Meter, right over here now, if you will, and bring Dorothy's hand with you and sit down next <laughs> to me. And uh, at this point, uh, we get uh, one free question. You know, one free guess, actually, as to what your line may be. And we always get free guesses to start with Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. I think he me? runs a linotype machine. Think he runs a linotype machine, Mr. Allen? No, I think he has something to do with printing. Miss Francis? <laughs> I think he's a stonemason. Mr. Sir? I think he teaches history at Brooklyn College. No, I'm afraid not. Let our viewers have a further look at Mr. Mida. At the same time, we'll tell them what his line is. But, uh, Mr. Meter, I think you are familiar with this. When my arm gets tired, you've won the game. Okay? Nice. All right, Mr. Meter is salaried. With that, let's begin the general questioning with Steve Allen. Do you deal in a product, sir? Yes, sir. Is it the sort of product that, when used, comes in contact with the body in any way? Yes. <laughs> uh, could it then possibly be described as being worn? Yes. Could it be worn by both sexes? Yes. <laughs> I take it from the reaction of the audience that if, uh, say, Arlene and I were to be wearing these things... <laughs> yeah, I guess I'm right. <laughs> I didn't know what I was going to say, but I guess I'm right. In other words, if Arlene, say, were to wear one of these, it would be pretty ridiculous, is that it? <laughs> yes, I think it would be pretty ridiculous. Would it be ridiculous to assume that uh, grown-ups like us would ever wear a thing like this? I can't think of any circumstance where you might wear it and not appear ridiculous. <laughs> but I never rule anything out. <laughs> That's what I like about you, John. <laughs> well, then, to go to the other extreme, could this be something worn by, say, a one-year-old? Could this be something worn by a one-year-old? Yes. <laughs> Might it possibly be the, uh, the only thing he had on at a given moment? <laughs> yes, that's possible. Uh, is this a, an object which might be taken off and put on several times a day? Yes. Well, then, would a, uh, would a new father, let's say, have a lot of difficulty putting this on the baby? In the particular instance of this product, I would say that a new father would have a lot of difficulty putting it on the baby. Yeah. <laughs> Let me ask you a blunt question. Am I on the wrong track? <laughs> I pass to Arlene. I don't know what the hell. <laughs> Steve, you're going to have hysterics when you find out what this is. Miss Francis. If Steve or I were animals, would we be able to wear this product? Yes. Ooh. Then this is something that belongs on an animal, and a one-year-old animal could wear it. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, is it an animal that has four legs? Yes. Uh, is it an animal that is reasonably large? Yes. Is it an animal like, uh, well, a horse? Yes. And this is something a horse might wear? Yes. And his father couldn't put it on him. 
Well, would a horse wear this to keep warm? <laughs> no. Oh. You want to have a night to go to the fair? Well, now, let's see. Uh, uh, there, are, there are all sorts of parts to a horse. And I, yes, I, there I, are. <laughs> I've, I've met them all in my time. Uh, would this uh, saying that you have something to do with Mr. Meter have uh, been worn somewhere around the head of the horse? Yes. It would. Uh, would it be worn anywhere near the horse's eyes? Yes. Pretty near the horse's eyes, yes. sure. Very near. Yeah, am I correct in saying that they're not blinders, I, I would say. Not blinders. Is that correct? No. Not yes, not. you are correct in saying they're not this, blinders, no. Would this have anything to do with the horse's harness? The horse's harness? <laughs> no. Two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Not the harness, and not blinders, but the head. Yeah. <laughs> the hat, of course! <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I would. Uh, may we rule out the hat? It couldn't be. Nobody could make hats for horses. I think Mr. Meader will let you rule out the oh. hat. Well, uh, is it smaller than a saddle? Uh, yes. Is it near the neck of the horse? No. no. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Allen. I'm going to give you one more minute. Is it encountered around the horse's mouth? Bit. Yes. Bit. Is it a bit? Or Is it a like bit? It? No, you bit, and it ain't a bit. The horn out of six to be in his fancy. Uh, could it be a bridle of some kind? A bridle? What a happy idea in spring For a coming groom, too. That makes it five down and five to go, Mr. Sir. Well, you say it's around the, around the mouth, so. Mm -hmm. It's used in oh. saliva tests. I, uh, I passed it down. Oh. No, the saliva test is six down and four to go, Miss Kilgallen. Here I go again. Excuse me, everybody. Is it a feed bag? A feed bag is right. Just <laughs> <laughs> clean up work, Miss Dorothy. What does Mr. Meter have to do with make, uh, with uh, uh, feed bags? <laughs> Thank you, John. He makes them. Very good. I don't know how you learn. <laughs> well, Mr. Meter, I've flip the card, so I'll flip a card. That makes you do pretty well with the prizes, but we had a lot of fun, and thanks very much for being our guest in What's My Line. It's nice to see you, sir. All right, in just a moment, we'll meet tonight's... ...come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity. My friends would recognize our guest on site, so we have, as we do every week, supplied them with blindfolds. Are they all in place, panel? Yes, sir. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? As you know, panel, in the case of... We get right down to the usual. Why don't you take your masks off? What? Take your masks off. Really? Unhappily... Do you mean it? A very nice gentleman is our guest tonight, but uh, Daily Variety on the West Coast printed the fact that he was going to be on the program, and Walter Winchell's column had it today. But we asked him to come and see us anyway. Uh, uh, I'm very unhappy that we couldn't have kept the blindfolds on, Van, because I think we could have given them a real rough time. Uh, this was my argument. This was my argument. It's oh. all been at Surf's fault. <laughs> <laughs> but the one thing that I can't let Van go for, one reason we asked him to please come out and say hello, not but also to you folks at home, is he'd been practicing on a voice yeah, with which he was going to ask, you know, answer the questions. So ask some questions. I want to hear the voice. <laughs> Arlene asked him a question. Uh, would you be considered a leading man? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we would have guessed it right away. <laughs> I would say it's, it's a great pleasure, Mr. Johnson, that we are able to take off our masks so that we can enjoy looking at you. Oh, we don't have that opportunity. Oh, girl, <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask Mr. Johnson a question? Sure. Didn't you tell me Wednesday night you were leaving town on Thursday? I got grounded. <laughs> <laughs> Incidentally, Van, now that you've seen us, would you like to have a mask? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Thanks very much for coming to see us. Oh, what See what our panel can do with another challenger. Would you come and sign in, please, ma'am? Sign in, please. L. Y. Lynn. East. No. Lynn. 
Lynn Gordon. Is that right? <laughs> Is it Miss or Mrs.? Miss. No. Miss Gordon, where are you from? New York City. New York City? Yes. Well, now, actually, we have something less than four minutes left. So, let's bypass the panel. My arms, come with me. Yes. Is that right here, please? All right, now, Miss Gordon, the panel's had a quick look at you. We'll give them their usual free guesses on the basis of this very quick look. We begin the free guesses with Miss Kilgallen. I think she's a torch singer. A torch singer, Mr. Allen. I think she's... <laughs> to serve. I think Miss Gordon's a professional athlete of some sort. No, I'm afraid not. We'll let our viewers have a further look at Miss Gordon. At the same time, we'll tell them what her line is, but the panel's got to work. Gordon, I think you're familiar with the rules. Yes. You know what the card flipping all means, so it leaves uh, for me to tell the panel that you are self-employed and then ask uh, Bennett Surf to start the general question. Miss Gordon, do you do most of your work indoors? Yes. Would it be done at a desk? No. One down, nine to go. Miss Kilgallen. <laughs> Uh, but do you do work in an enclosure? Most Ye of the time, I would say. Yes. It's a place with windows and doors? Yes. Uh, has it anything to do with the entertainment business? Yes. In a way. How do you mean in a way? <laughs> <laughs> in a way, I mean in a way. Uh, yes. May I then assume from John's misleading little remark that you are not a performer yourself? No. No, you may not. <laughs> he is a performer? Yes. yes. That's two down and eight to go, Mr. Allen. <laughs> Do you perform before live audiences? Yes. Some of them she's had her doubts about, but then... <laughs> in other words, you're not a performer, at least in the way we're trying to find out tonight in motion pictures that eliminates that sort of thing. That's a very good question, actually. <laughs> Just say yes and let's go on. Yes. All right. Uh, is there anything musical connected with what you're, the type of entertaining no. you do? That's no. That's three down and seven to go, Miss Francie. Do you uh, uh, have other people with you when you perform? Are there other people with you when you perform? You mean necessary to the performance? No, other people with you. Other people with you? Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, 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 would you be considered an act of some kind? Yes. Could you perform in a place like uh, Madison Square Garden if you had to? Yes. Uh, does it require some dexterity? You mean manual dexterity? Well, why not? Yes, oh, mental dexterity. <laughs> Four down and six to go. We've got time for about one more question. Well, Mr. sir, uh, is it mental dexterity then that you uh, show? Must be, if it isn't physical. I would think that some mental dexterity is necessary uh, to the degree that uh, Miss Gordon would be required to be mentally on the qui vive, as we say. And I'm on the qui vive. Time has run out, Nothing so we'll flip all the cards what? on the basis of a default on time. And Miss Gordon, you get the full prize. Well, there, you get the full prize. And our thanks for being our guest and watch my line. Miss Gordon is a hypnotist. Oh. Thank you very much. Now we'll be back in just a minute. Until next week, this is John Daly saying good night, Dorothy. Good night, Steve. Good night, Arlene. <laughs> good night, Bennett. We've got a couple of girl hypnotists on our panel, too. Good night, John. <laughs> good night, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for being with us on What's My Line. This has been a Mark Goodson, Bill Trotman production. In association with the CBS Television Network. Johnson appears with the courtesy of MGM Pictures, places released.